Yo, what it do guys, and welcome to a Comey guide and build video for Steel Path, all right? So if you are a newer player right now, my advice is this isn't gonna really be for you, but I will help you understand the Warframe. Now, or there will be timestamps underneath, so feel free to go and skip ahead if you really understand what's going on. But if you don't understand, since she's brand new, um, there are certain things that are kind of hearsay right now. I wanna show you everything that is not hearsay and what actually works in the way that it does work. So without further ado, let's go and get straight into it. Let's go and start off with her passive. Every 60 seconds, one of Komi's weapons will inflict random status effects. Now, a little bit confusing here. It's not so much Komi's weapons because she comes with two of them. She comes with Hegasa and Ama Amamanta or something like that. Um, you don't need either of them. It could be any a primary, any secondary, and any melee. It's not so much Komi's weapons. It's just whatever your weapons are as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, all of these are currently unmodded. So I'm just going to show you one that's currently unmodded. They're all unmodded. So if I go ahead and look now in the bottom right you see this part here well this is basically going to end up telling me which one gets all of the status effects so we saw that this was unmodded so yes i get puncture on it because it does puncture but it's not doing anything else this is also unmodded and if i keep hitting this enemy right here you can see how many status elements i've just done to that enemy now i'll go back and show you that it is unmodded and that's how that works okay so boom cool so every 60 seconds, it will rotate between one of these three weapons. So if you do want to go and play Komi, my advice is if you want to get the most out of her passive, which in fairness, you probably should do because it's actually kind of free damage due to primers. Um, you should um, run things like galvanized mods or condition overloads. So um, whatever build you're going to end up running, run galvanized aptitude 40 percent direct damage per status type affecting the target okay uh, same goes with uh, melees for example uh, condition overload as well so these mods are going to work in tangent and in synergy with her very very well all right so now the other thing that she's also got is in the bottom right you can go ahead and see that there's some what looks like dice and you are right she's the dice maiden she is a gambler so if you like your odds you're gonna like her if you don't like your odds you're not gonna like her <laughs> either way let's go and explain how this works i'm gonna have to use her first ability really quickly but don't worry about the ability let's pay attention to the dice so we roll it i rolled a 23. Now, two rule of thumbs just going to get straight to the point here number one the total number does matter Okay, and number two is, um, you see how one of them, I've rolled a six, the bottom left one there. Um, you can, if you end up rolling three sixes or even four or five sixes, but if you end up rolling three sixes or more, it will change or add a unique thing to the rest of your abilities. So one, two, three, or four. Every time you cast an ability, you're rolling dice every single time. Okay, so she's purely gambling. The number does matter. General rule of thumb, uh, the number mostly means more damage, but I'll explain on each ability okay so um right let's go and get to our first uh, ability then shall we right so komi himu as you could go and see here um she throws out like a, a ball of yarn or like a ball of thread if you will and then what's going to happen is threads are going to split off and any enemies that come into contact with those threads will end up basically taking random status elements depending on which thread they end up connecting now it does scale on range and there's two factors that it scales on range when you initially throw it and thread length okay so it can cover more area and you can throw it further it also scales with duration and how long it lasts and then the damage is 25 times your total roll do you see what i'm saying so the the total damage number does actually matter here so if i go and roll that it's 25 times 18 that's the damage i'll be doing now if i do go and show you on enemy standing still real quickly and i go and throw this out you'll see that some enemies just don't get touched by the ball of string so there's no like element on them as you can see here now if i pull them with magus anomaly that's why i just used there for those people who are wondering you can see i can put an element on that one because it walked through the string now if you look at the string i'm not going to be able to tell you this because i am color deficient but you can tell the different colors and what elements they might be doing simply by just kind of like looking at them as well now if you end up rolling three sixes on this oh there you go now look at the color of the strings that was very lucky, by the way. That, they look at the color of the strings. You can go ahead and see that they're all kind of like one particular color. I think somebody said they're like silver or something like that. Basically, what happens here is that instead of applying like one random element or like maybe two random elements or two procs if you're lucky, you will apply 10 elements. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get this. There you go. 10 elements. So I'll look at all of the elements up there. Now, to give you guys a rundown, I'll put it up on screen really quickly. This can run, this can uh, affect these elements here. 
The only elements it cannot use on the first ability is impact, puncture, and slash. You cannot roll or inflict enemies with these threads with impact, puncture, and slash, okay? Every other element that's in the generic 13 elements, you can affect. So that doesn't mean suspended, that doesn't mean void, that doesn't mean microwave, whatever, all right? But just impact, puncture, and slash, the three physical elements you cannot get on her first ability. Now, besides from that, that's basically all you need to go and know about first ability. So let's move on to the um, second ability. Now, this one's going to take a long time to go ahead and explain. So I, I thank you guys for your patience here. And if you think I do a good job of this, like I said, like the video, okay? Because I, I want to make sure that I'm getting and giving you guys as much correct information as possible. So, Omi Kuji, let me go ahead and explain this one. Now, if you are not familiar with this word called Deviri Paradox, you won't be familiar with the next word I'm about to say called decrees. Now, my advice to you is that until you play the very paradox and until you go ahead and learn decrees, you're not really going to understand what's kind of going on with this ability. Now, for those people who like systems like roguelite or roguelike, you probably will like the system because decrees are kind of random buffs and boons and maybe sometimes debuffs that basically help you on your adventure and reward you for staying in um collecting them over time it's kind of like a deck builder but you don't actually you don't really build and choose the deck it's just randomly given to you okay so the way that this works is and let's go and get this if i go and press two there's two things i want to pay attention to number one is the challenge here when it fades up it goes up there and number two is also the roll that i use now i didn't roll what was considered like an unlucky roll now if i do roll an unlucky roll up there the challenge will have a little warning next to it and if i roll unlucky let's say i roll like an 11 i don't actually know what con constitutes as an unlucky roll i'm going to be honest with you i think it's like a low roll if you roll maybe anything under like 13 or something i don't know but um you could end up getting punished for trying to do a challenge during the challenge so for example um if i rolled an 11 i might get toxin status inflicted on me until i complete the challenge which as you could imagine is really hard to deal with um odds are i may end up dying quite a fair few, fair few times or i'm going to need to find a way to protect myself from toxin status okay anyways let's go ahead and talk about this one so that's an unlucky roll now i rolled lucky so we're good um and then up there i need to go and kill 26 enemies inflicted with toxin status but as we know my first ability hypothetically can go ahead and apply random elements so to be honest getting that and getting an elemental challenge is actually quite easy to do right because as you can imagine she's going to be very elemental not just her first ability but her fourth ability we will get to that a little bit later so what will then happen is once I then go ahead and get this done, I'm just going to take a little bit of time, so forgive me on this one. But I'm going to try and go ahead and, and kill him if I can here. Um, I want to go and complete a challenge here for you guys. So this is her fourth ability. I'm sorry that I'm not explaining it right now. A bit of a cooldown on her fourth. So what will happen is once you go and complete a challenge, you'll be given a random decree. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what decrees can you go ahead and get? And that is, that's a good question. So the very paradox has quite a lot of decrees as you could actually imagine. And you don't get all of the decrees that exist in the very paradox. Okay, because that would be kind of crazy. There is definitely some really, really good decrees that we would all like to have, but we can't get them. Now the decrees that she currently gets for those who are interested, um, might be subject to change, okay? Just because I think some of them are a little bit too not useful, but that's gambling, and some of them might also be new in the future, so she might get some newer ones, who knows? But let's go ahead and show you the decrees. Once I go ahead and get this one, I just wanna show you what it looks like. So you can see what this all looks like live. There we go. I got critical frost critical hits deal an extra uh, hit with 40 percent cold damage and status so if you want to see what your decree looks like you go towards your menu and you can see here now listen to me and listen to me crystal clear because this is the part that some people get confused on when you earn a decree it stays with you until you finish and leave the mission why is that important? Because on smaller missions and quicker missions like capture or exterminate, spy, rescue, this isn't that good, as you can imagine. I'm only gonna get a couple of decrees and then the mission kind of forces me to extract. On, on missions that are endurance, things like survival, things like excavation, interception, yeah, yeah, void cascade if you want to. Yeah, those kind of missions, 
this is an amazing system. You're going to be able to continue scaling whilst enemies are also scaling, right? The longer that you stay in, the, the tankier and the more damage the enemies will end up doing. But that's fine. We'll end up getting decrees. We can end up matching that. So I echo it one last time. You keep decrees until you finish the mission and leave. It's exactly like the very paradox. You just can't pick and choose which decrees you get. Okay. Now, the challenge is, if I go and press it now, I got to kill 26 enemies for headshots. Now, you could be thinking, oh, God, Clark, please don't go through this part again. I won't. Let's say I don't want that. Let's just say, oh, do you know what? I don't want to go and do 26 headshots right now. Uh, I'm going to go. Is there a way that I can get rid of it? Yes. If you hold the ability down, you can cancel it. So I'm just going to hold it for a second. Look up there. Okay. So I just hold it for 0.5 seconds. You could go and get rid of it. Here's the problem. I'm going to go and cancel it. I've now got 74 cooldown, but you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's insane. No, I've just been in here for a while. Okay, so I've been trying to record this video a few times. My point is for every challenge that you get, whether you complete the challenge or discard the challenge, your overall time goes up. I thought it was on every decree that you complete and get, it goes up. No, at least that could be subject to change. But if you discard one, because I'll discard one again in a moment. So that was 75 seconds. If you discard it, you'll also get increased time. It's genuinely quite a lot. Okay, so if at each decree, I think, it, I think it goes up to like 10 or something like that, or six or eight, and then it caps at 150 seconds. So once you hit 150 seconds as a cooldown, it won't ever go over 150 seconds, but it will be 150 seconds for each and every subsequent challenge and decree that you get. Does that make sense? So it scales all the way up to 150 seconds. So the first couple are fine, all right? Now, the way that this works as well is if you roll three sixes, three sixes, so you've got five, five sixes that you could roll. If you roll three sixes or more, so you roll four sixes or five sixes, you roll three sixes, you will completely bypass the challenge. You do not need to do the challenge that it gives you, okay? So I'm going to go and press two again now. 30 se uh, 30, 37 enemies that 20 meters away. I'm going to go and discard it. Look at the cooldown. 99 seconds so i'm saying so it, it's not so much go ahead. I, my advice is you don't want to be rejecting any and comey's going to be a very um a very endurance frame if you're looking to go and do exterminates and so forth and whatnot she's not going to excel and you're not going to feel her as good there now i'm going to go and get up on screen these are the decrees that she can go and get my advice to you is that if you do not like my notes right now that's fine you don't have to take them Feel free to go to the Warframe Wikipedia and go have a little look at the ones that she gets. If you don't know what that decree is, I mean, it should go ahead and write the decree down for you. Then just open up the very paradox and look for decrees. Now you can go ahead and do your own research. My advice, this is what I like. Take your time to pause. I'm going to go and just read a couple. Twofold Torment doubles your status damage. She is a status damage frame. A frame. She's all about statuses. She doesn't. She could use her for Primer, so you don't have to go damage. You could just use her for status chance. But Twofold Torment is like a no-brainer. It, it's just simply more damage. I'll take it. Fierce and Bonanza, um, you get 100% more damage per enemy within 20 meters afflicted by status elements. It's just more damage. So whether you use it for your melees or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're just getting more damage. These two are just very, very synergistic with her. Now, there are other good things. There's things like Vicious Barb, which is just critical damage, more so for like weaponry rather than abilities. You see what I'm saying? And then there's things like Majestic Strike. But again, it's specific because it's only for melee. So if you like the gunplay, then although it's very good to go and have, it's not like a what you want because you may be running like primaries and secondaries and not really caring about, caring about melees. That's okay. That's okay. But this is very, very good because it hits twice. Now, just overall, general, these are just good to go and have. Okay, just generally, these are very, very nice. And I will go and point out these three in specific as well, because you might be thinking in steel path armor falls off. And you are right. However, this is a lot of armor. That's like 900 armor. And I think that's like 720 armor or something like that. And although it's duration, which isn't that good, but for every 50 armor, you get 15% strength and it can scale all up to 500% strength. With her base armor and those two, Corrosive Grit and Reign of Vitality, if you get Fortified Will, you're going to get a lot of ability strength. Depending on the build that you're taking, might not be that good. If you're going like pro, pro if you're going to go use her as a primer, not that good. I'm not. I'm going to take her for damage and I'm going to show you the build that I run, okay? So this is very good for me. All right. Now, there's other things that are specifics. This might be, for example, um, Wormland's Aid, which is 200% corrosive damage and proc, 
uh, as an extra hit um, to guns. So if you're taking a melee build, it's, it's, it's specific to guns. Does that mean these are all good, but they're specific? Venomous touch, melee, 300% toxin damage and proc. But it's melee, you get the idea? These, I think they're kind of meh, but I don't think that they're bads. Okay, so you end up having them. You can mess about with them. It's all fine. Problem is with this one, although I think it still is kind of good, it's like, it's just a Xenuric passive. But uh, at that point, I'd rather just go and have things like moral boosts. So I can't pick and choose what I get. That's why I say it's meh. So when you look at this one, I know that there's going to be someone who'll look at this list and go, oh my goodness, scrap the video. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I do know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. If the very paradox, if I was in the very paradox, as an example, I would never really pick any of these. Because I don't, I don't want to either adopt that playstyle, or because that playstyle is too disruptive, or because the duration is way too short. For example, it's nice that I get melee attack speeds, 75%, but I have to do a ground slam, and I only get it for 5 seconds. Which means I'm going to be ground slamming a lot, so unless I do a ground slam, slam specific builds, which probably I'm not going to inside the very paradox as an example, therefore it's not as good. And I won't lie to you, now that I look at it away from the very paradox, would I also be doing a ground slam build with Komi? Probably not. See what I'm saying? Same goes with like finishes. 200% uh, strength to the next ability cast would still be nice, but that means I've got to do a finisher every single time in order to go and proc that. I don't want to do that. Okay, I just don't. All right, and the same thing goes with this one. This one as well is definitely a controversy one. Uh, roll in as well. 120% crit damage. Don't get me wrong. It's If I get it, I get it. You know, I don't control it, and I guess it's kind of there. And I might use it on like a big unit, maybe like an acolyte or an Eximus, like a Guardian Eximus that I need to kind of bring down a little bit quicker. But for the most part, I wouldn't adopt the playstyle that makes me roll every four or five seconds to go ahead and keep a 120% crit damage. See what I'm saying? Anyways, and these ones I just haven't played about with. You do your own research, all right? But this is probably what I would go and recommend is kind of inside this bracket here. So feel free to go and pause it and have a little look, and uh, you can agree to disagree. It's all good. So that's Omi Kuji. As you can imagine, that's a lot to go through. I think I covered everything else on it. There's a rare decree chance is 15%. That actually scales with your overall level of the thing. So max rank, it is 15%. If it wasn't max rank, it's actually a lot lower. And three sixes uh bypasses it. Okay, cool. We've now got our next ability. Omi uh Oma Mori. Okay. Now that's kind of what's going on around me at the moment, but let's go ahead and press our third ability and let's see what I roll. I rolled a 17. Now, what you will also notice at the bottom right is uh, there's also a 17 on my third ability. The way that this basically works is, is that I've got 17 charms around me now. So I've got 17 chances to... Let's go and read this. 17 chances to block enemy incoming damage and even status as well like like knockdowns so forth so it's like a prime sure footed but 50 percent of the time so gamble your prime sure footed if you want to um but there's a block chance then instead of the enemy doing damage to me it will now heal me instead and consume a charm that's basically how it works so you can see at the very bottom numbers of charms it's one multiplied by whatever the total dice number is that i go ahead and roll okay and then there's a recast count at five and the way that that basically works is if you rolled and let's say that you rolled a five because five is what you can roll lowest that's five ones um you could just basically instantly re-roll again or let's say that you rolled 10 and an enemy shot you five times and they procked it five times and you've only got five left five charms left you can roll it again so as soon as you hit five in the bottom right so i roll it i roll i got 24 now as soon as that 24 goes down to five i can recast it okay now if you do go ahead and recast it and get three sixes you will actually remain invulnerable for the time that you have all the way on all of the charms that you have left I know it's a lot to take in, but basically, if I rolled, um, if I rolled a total of twenty-two, and in the twenty-two I rolled three sixes, then every single one of those charms is going to keep me invulnerable until I lose those charms. Does that make sense? So rolling three sixes on Omi Mori is a very good thing. Omi Mori is also a subsumable ability that you can give to the Hellmimph. I I've never subsumed it on anyone else, so I don't know if you keep the dice. I would assume that you probably do keep the dice, but I don't know. Anyways, that's the subsumable one. That's how Oma Mori works. And then finally, we've got Bun Raku, okay? Now, Bun Raku is kind of similar to the first ability. It's all about elements, so we're going to be applying lots of elements. However, unlike the first ability, this one's about crowd control. So what we're going to end up doing is that she now becomes the puppet master, okay? So a puppeteer strings. Now, this is, first of all, this is really cool to look at, as you can kind of see here. 
So what's actually happening here is they are crowd control. So if they have uh, overguards, I won't be able to pick them up like this. I won't be able to crowd control them. Keep that in mind. But I can go ahead and apply elements to them. Now, can you see that that one's got slash there? Okay, just because I saw this on the Wikipedia and I wanted to go and clear it up just really quickly. There's a little bit of hearsay going on right now. Um, your fourth ability can apply impact, puncture, and slash, and can also apply the other 10 generic. Toxin, heat, cold, electric, corrosive blast, radiation, viral, magnetic gas. You can apply all 13 elements on her fourth ability. Please understand that you can do that, okay? A little bit of miscommunication going on around at the moment, so I wanted to go and clarify that one. You cannot apply the physical impact puncture slash on her first ability, but you can apply it on her fourth ability. We good? Excellent. Because that's actually really important for what we want to go and do in a bit. So what happens if you end up rolling uh, three sixes? Um, what will happen is um, you see the status on them. So it says like 18 um, heat procs and then one magnetic. What would happen is if I roll three sixes, it just starts applying more elements over time. So long as the duration of the ability is there, it will just keep up. So it might be like um, electric, toxin, corrosive, slash, and then it might go ahead and give me more heat. It might go and say like 22 stacks of heat. Get the idea? It will then just start applying more elements. Now, depending on the roll that you have here will also depend on how many elements you're inflicting onto them. So I rolled a 19. It had 18 heat procs and one magnetic. And also keep in mind that every single enemy that goes ahead and gets afflicted by this will have different elements. No elements are going to be the same. This one has slash, cold, electric, toxin. This one has just electric. 20 stacks of electric this one has a uh, puncture 15 stacks of slash viral and free corrosive that one's got magnetic uh, this one's got whatever you get the idea that one's got cold electric heat they've all got different elements on them so you can't really control which elements you can get now the only other thing to go and say about bun raku i believe i've covered everything so far except from one last thing if you also roll so if i look like here and i press four oh i actually rolled it Okay, that was a terrible example because I actually rolled it. I, was, I wasn't expecting to roll it. I can afflict. So it, you kind of shoot it out like a cone, like in front of you, kind of. But I don't know what the degree is. I think it's like 145 degrees. I'm not It's weird. It's not like 180. I don't think it is. I've tested it a few times. But you see how like those enemies were affected there. Oh, look, look how many statuses they've got on them now. Some of them are just dead. Look at that. So that's the status over time. But you see how like I was looking here? Remember that because that's really important. I'm going to do it again. I should not land three sixes. If I do, you subscribe to the channel. Okay, you don't subscribe. Tough. As you can see, they're not affected. So the idea is that if you end up rolling three... <laughs> I just lost loads of subs. <laughs> if, you end up if you end up rolling three sixes right now, you can also end up affecting enemies that are also behind Komi as well. Okay, I don't quite know the degree angle. I don't know if it goes into like... If you roll 360s, it goes 360 degrees. That's the only one I haven't tested. But as you can clearly see, I'm not affecting them, right? As you can clearly see there. But if I do this... You see, like, I affected all of them except from that. And you can see, like, that was, like, out the corner of my screen. So it could just be whatever your screen angle is, but I don't know what angle that is. It's not 180 degrees, I can tell you that. So whatever your screen angle is, whatever it can see, as long as it's got line of sight on the enemy, it can affect them with the ability Bunraku. Okay, I believe, just going to double check, I believe I've covered everything about this. Okay, so that's a lot to cover. She's a very heavy gambling frame. You're not going to get everything whenever you play on her the same way whenever you play on her again the next mission. So if you like the randomness and chaotic, that's her. So let's go and get towards the next part. So at this point, we're coming towards builds. Okay, hopefully at this point, you've either skipped towards this part and you're listening to what I'm saying, or you're going to skip just a little bit ahead and look at some of the builds. That's fine. Um, so I started off by doing this. Now, now, listen to me. If you have skipped to here as well, this is important. I don't recommend this build. I don't. But let me explain, like, what's going on. Because there are elements of I, I, I like. But I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. So, let's just talk about a few things. So, first of all, there was a lot of range on here. So, I wanted to explain why I did this. You'll notice it's called Primer. So, Primer in Warframe, again, is something where if you end up debuffing an enemy with statuses, your weapons can scale off of that. So, Galvanize, uh, Shot, Galvanize, uh, Aptitude, Condition, uh, Over overloads these kind of mods they scale off how many elements affect the enemy right so i was like let's use her as a primer 
And as I did that, I was like, well, I want as much range as possible to affect as much of the battleground as I can. What I kind of noticed was it's a little bit counterintuitive because if you use her first, you need enemies to run through all the way through the tangles, right? Depending on the tile set, you do not need 280% range. It's way overkill. But listen to what I'm about to say. If you then use her fourth ability, you crowd control enemies so that they can't run through this. So pick or choose your poison. At this point, if you're going primer in, you might be better off just taking either one of those out. But keep in mind, the crowd control here is good for your survival. So if you just if you just play around with this, you are open to more enemy damage. So you, you gotta pick and choose your poison. But basically, this doesn't want lots of range. This wants lots of range. It's a very fine balance. I'm going to let you guys figure it out, but let me talk about the rest of the kit, okay? But I just don't want you guys to go and copy that and be like, oh, he could do still path of this. You can, but I didn't like it, okay? Because I was like, oh, there's, there's weakness in here. And we're going to talk about a few key points, though. Due to her being very status heavy, the Archon mods are actually pretty good. Let's start off there. Archon Stretch. Now, Archon Stretch, unlike things like Energy Siphon, for example, let's go and take that if you was going to use this, that gives you 0.6 energy regen. This gives you two energy regen in over five seconds but think about how easy it was for me to go ahead and apply electric which means this actually becomes no matter what build you do with her this actually becomes a very good mod for her odds are you're going to apply electric okay even if one enemy doesn't get it keep in mind you've got different probability for different elements on different enemies so therefore the odds are still in your favor that you're probably going to end up proccing this all right the other thing is Archon Continuity. If you're taken as a primer concept, whenever you inflict a toxin status, you can also inflict a corrosive status. So this is good from a primer aspect because I'm just inflicting another free element that my galvanize or condition overload mods can scale off. I'll also chime this in here. Oh, Clark, does that mean I can go and run like two Emerald mods with it and then just off I go? No, don't do that, okay? Um, it, it There's just not enough consistency to go ahead and benefit from it. So I'm just going to let you guys know that right now, okay? Then over here, we got Arc of Vitality. This is good, but if you're not going for like a strength or damage related build, it's not that good. But hey, it's still just free damage regardless. And also health like literally suits her because Omimori is also just healing you over time as well. So, well, not healing you over time, but heals you on proc and on chance when it does go in proc. Now, due to this as well, um, the block chance... Um, because you could also potentially go ahead and block like um being knocked down you don't have to go and run things like prime sure footage okay you don't have to but you're gambling you're gambling okay you're gambling prime sure footage there's also decrees like over here that you can go and see there's a decree like uh stable stance which is 25 percent resistance to knockdown as well um it's just a little bit specific because it requires you to go and be in a group of enemies in order to go and get that and you need at least four enemies to go ahead i think it's additive so it's 25 50 75 100 i've not really tested it yet but if you do get a chance to test it you can let me know um so i think it's a prime shot for it if you can get it here okay um so again you don't need that so you'll see like up here for example i have this mod and honestly i don't think i've ever used this mod until this point because it actually kind of worked minus 75 percent um aim uh gravity whilst aim gliding which means i don't fall and drop as much when i'm aim gliding and i also get 60 percent increased aim glide duration now like i said some of the challenges are airborne kills which this actually works out really well for uh other things are going to be like wall latch duration and so forth and again you will need to go in wall latch so this actually works out pretty well okay so you can go ahead and throw mods like that in there it's a little weird it's a little niche but it is what it is same goes with like slides as well you can also go and do slides all right uh, the rest of it is just kind of like survival and just overall utility that was that build do i recommend it no not necessarily but if i did recommend it play it inside a group you can become a primer inside a group i don't think it's that bad but when i did this in solo steel path i wasn't liking it so enough yapping let's go and get to the build that i do recommend this one right here this build i had a blast with now I will go and get some gameplay footage again just in a moment where you guys can go and see what it looks like uh, up on the screen um, but this build is all about rhino's raw amplifying three things three dots first dot heat okay heat damage will be applied twice with rhino's raw i'm also faction dipping which means i'm double dipping which means i'm getting a lot of heat procs which is fantastic so heat is doing a lot of damage okay the second thing is toxin right so again i've got rhino's raw 
what I then go and do is I use these emerald shards for 30% more toxin effect damage. This is also really, really helpful towards her just to help even more damage. So not only is heat popping, but toxins also popping as well. Okay. So that's also an extra 100%. So it's kind of like double dipping as well. And then we got the raw on top of it. So you're just doing a lot more damage, right? Then what we then have is Slash. And we all know Slash to be really, really strong. Well, Bun Raku can go ahead and afflict Slash, whereas the uh, Komi uh, Himu can't afflict Slash, which means that this is also good for three different types of dot. Now, don't get me wrong. There is Electric in here, and you might be thinking, well, Clark, I thought you said you should go and run Arc on Stretch on here. If you see my capacity, I would do. I just need to form a that, and then I can go and put my Arc on Stretch mods right here. But I don't have the room right now, so oops. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, how do you go ahead and sustain your energy? Let me go and talk about a few different things real quickly. First of all, I've got an adaptation just because I'm going for a bit of a survival build where I'm healing myself with this. But for the most part, I'm actually still shield gating quite a fair bit. So I could actually change this for rolling guard if I wanted to. You can go ahead and do that. It's up to you, especially if you're going to start like going towards level capping or you're going to stay in for a long time consider rolling guard here also if you do get the challenge that also dips into your health pool the toxin proc for rolling on your second tier and you roll like a bad roll yeah that rolling guard is actually not a bad shout otherwise i'm trying to bump this up as much as i can hence precision intensify 90 percent ability strength also on my fourth and i'm trying to go and make sure that raw is just double dipping so the combo that i have here and i do this for quite a few warframes but i'm going to explain how it works brief respite equilibrium flow blind rage energize let me explain what's happening flow is total capacity equilibrium is um health and energy remember that because it's gonna be important for two different reasons you'll know one but you probably won't know the second because it's actually a decree um then i lower my efficiency right with blind rage i get more ability damage this now scales 150 percent because this now costs more drain more energy to cast which means i get more shield back whenever i press four so i press four i i crowd control them give myself shields and dot them okay i can also kill xmas units acolytes sentient uh, sentient sentience sentience and frax all like that they're not surviving when i do this okay so that synergizes. Not only does that synergize, remember the equilibrium, I now got to go ahead and run a companion. And I already have a video on this about how this works. This companion I use for two different things. Number one, I use it as a primer, which just naturally works very well with what I'm doing anyways. So Manifold Bond allows its precepts, which is its abilities, this, to apply elements from its weapons, this. So this is, as you see, I don't have damage. I just have multi-shot primering, attack speeds, all of that good stuff fire rate whatever i take this because it's micro missiles which means it when it hits an enemy it splashes aoe i splash aoe and i create more of them and i take this because this scales off if you read it every time i use 100 energy i will also go ahead and get another die rigger here i can get three more of them which then brings four of them in total they're all shooting aoe splash um weapons that are primering due to due to um just the elements that i have on this okay none of them none of the clones will be doing this only the one that i have on me does this and then i run that enemies injured by companions have a 25 percent chance to drop a health orb when killed well that's not bad because equilibrium converts that health uh, converts that health as well to give me a 110 percent increase so i also get energy whenever i pick up a health orb on, on top of that there's also another one in here that also synergizes with it and i have lost it just give me a second that also makes um enemies drop health orbs here it is reign of vitality 60 percent chance for health orbs on enemy kills not too bad then, right? So equilibrium then becomes even more factors. So I'm getting all my energy back from this, right? All I've got to go and do is start running over towards energy orbs and so forth and or health orbs as well. And then if I do need it, like a big chunk back, so long as my KPM is going really well, I did this solo conjunction survival steel path um, and I didn't have really any energy issue. 
So I'll still keep talking here, but I'm kind of hoping at some point I'm going to start putting the footage over this as well. Um, but yeah, overall, she's a fun frame. She's not like top 10 most insane frames that you're going to see in the game. Her design is very unique, but with it comes a lot of random testing because of inconsistent results due to how random she is with all of the elements and all of the gambling. Um, I like her. I do like her. But again, she's not like a top five or top 10. But if you're a person that likes level capping or you're a person that likes endurance missions, you're really going to like her because of just the randomness that's going on. It definitely makes her a little bit more interesting when you can roll a twofold torment or roll like a fizz and bonanza and then off you go. You just start popping off even more. So in survival missions where enemies are scaling at a slow rate, but she's also scaling at a slow rate with decrees it matches pretty well so i kind of like her inside of survival and then you can match the kpm just by killing lots of enemies with your fourth and so forth and so forth get nice big open rooms look for as many er enemies as you can sit nice and back and just dot and watch the room explodes it's really nice so yes she's a good frame she's not a bad frame but she's not an insane frame. Please keep in mind that she's one of the frames that you can go and get a lot earlier these days as well. So newer players are going to end up having access to her probably before they end up having access to some even more complex frames. So that's going to be really confusing for them. But to the most point, that is Comey in a nutshell. <laughs> and as you can tell, there was a lot to cover. There was an awful, awful lot to go ahead and cover. So um, hopefully I'll bring this back to me at this point here anyways. I want to say thank you guys for watching today's video. Um, if you do like videos like this, please let it be heard. I know it's a long video. There's a lot to digest. Um, hopefully with the timestamps, it does help you guys. But um, I feel like, especially if I was to try and show this um, through just editing, there would be examples that I wouldn't be able to show because it's not live. So I'm hoping for Comey, this was a good example of what you can do, what she is, what she stands for, and where you would use her, okay? Excellent. Right, well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Again, a friendly reminder to go and like, share, subscribe, whatever you guys can go and do. Uh, I love what I do, so thank you guys for being here, and I will catch you guys again in the next video. Enjoy Comey, guys. Enjoy Comey. <laughs>